the impact 2022. Praise the Lord. Your time has come to climb. Amen. To rise. And to be an impact in the world in Jesus' name. Actually, this impact is for you in particular. The Lord is going to impact your life. And then through you, it will impact your community. Through you, impact your country. And impact the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I need to tell you a special plan. Today, I'll be dealing with the letter I in impact. Tomorrow, I deal with M. And then, the following day, I come with P for power in your life. And then the following day, A, the action and the attitude that makes you an achiever. And then on Sunday in the morning, I come with C, how to cope and not cop out. And then the final day, final night, that will be for T transformed and traveling together to impact the world. I pray that every session will have an impact in your life. The Lord will turn your life around. Failure, the Lord will remove. Defeat, the Lord will take away. And then set you up, climbing, rising, moving higher, moving on. And the purpose of God creating you and putting you in the world, in your place at this time, the Lord will fulfill. Are you with me there? Your hands up, Father. In Jesus' name, we well, thank you for this hour. Thank you for this time. Lord, I pray you open the windows of heaven, shower your blessings upon everyone without exception. In Jesus' name, your blessing upon every life, impact upon every life. And there you use everyone as a great impact in the world in which we live. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody shout. Thank you. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight we're looking at Acts chapter 9. And I'm reading to you from verse 3. Acts chapter 9, reading from verse 3. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly, there shined round about him a light from heaven. And then in verse 4, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? In verse 5, it says, and he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Then in verse 6, it tells us, And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou shalt do. 
I come to verse 15 there. In verse 15 it says, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you a story about a man. And I want to transmit and transfer that story to your life. My topic tonight is interrupting the insignificant for an incredible influence. Interrupting the insignificant for an incredible influence. Before you become an incredible influence, your life will be, trans will be interrupted. You see, this man we're talking about, it was insignificant. Who knew him? Only a small clique, only a small group knew him. And he became the mightiest influence in the world of his time. And even until this time, anywhere you think about civilization, the change of the Roman government and the change of the Roman Empire, you have to mention the name of Saul who became Paul the Apostle. Insignificant and yet he became a great influence. I want to trace his life. And as I trace his life, I want to look at your life and understand it was when God interrupted him. He was on a journey. He was moving on. He thought, that's what to do in life. And then, all of a sudden, the Lord interrupted his life for good. And as you are here today, maybe you have your own plans. I'll do this. I'll go here. I'll finish that. I'll do that. The plan may be good. God will interrupt your life to give you something better. The plan may be bad. God will interrupt your life and change that bad, bad plan into a good plan in Jesus' name. Anyone that ever became significant, ever became influential, ever became a go-getter, ever became an achiever, there was a point in that person's life when God arranged that something Somebody, someone, something good will interrupt his life. If your life is just going on as usual, what you did yesterday, you are doing today, what you are doing today, you'll do tomorrow, and your life is just going on like that, you may not amount to much in life. But when God looks at you like today, he's looking at your life. And he says, I'm going to interrupt him to make him an influence in the world. The Lord will interrupt your life. Yeah. And the Lord will interrupt that life with a miracle in Jesus' name. It was journeying on. And then, bam, an interruption came. Can I tell you what it was? Number one, it was a chattered villain. That is, people knew that he could do bad. It could hurt people. It could be very cruel. It could damage things, and they chattered him. He was a chattered villain. Number two, he was a childish vagabond. His life meant nothing. His own life meant nothing to him. The lives of people meant, meant nothing to him. He was a vagabond. He didn't have a job on hand. He was doing all he was doing. Go to Damascus, get to Jerusalem, go over here. And everywhere he went, he did evil. That was his life. And then the Lord charged him. He charged victimizer. He was victimizing people. People could not live at peace because ah, the man is coming and they will take shelter. They ran away from him. All of a sudden, something happened. That's what we call interruption. Wherever you are now, whatever you have done in the past, wherever you are journeying to, wherever you are journeying from, an interruption comes in your life today. 
you will be an influence in this world, significant in this world, mighty and powerful in this world, in Jesus' name. And then he was a chained victim. His character changed him, changed him down. He couldn't do right. He couldn't go up. The good he wanted to do, he couldn't do. The evil he didn't want to do, that's what he did. He amounted to nothing. His life was a zero. And then the Lord came. And the interruption of the Lord in his life brought a change brought a transformation and brought conversion in his life and he became a changed visioner. He now had vision, a man of vision, a man of idea, a man of goal, a man of purpose, a man of destiny. I pray to the Lord that that is what you will become in Jesus' name. Amen. Number one, a chattered villain. Number two, a churlish vagabond. Number three, a charged victimizer. And number four, a changed vi victim. And number five, a changed visioner. God will impart vision in your life. Destiny in your life. You will make it. To the top, you'll make it in Jesus' name. Number six, a chosen vessel. The Lord searching through all the Roman Empire at that time, all of the children of Israel, Jewish nation at that time, uh, he wanted some, somebody to do something special, and the Lord chose him uh, as a vessel. How the Lord, during this week that we are together, the Lord will lay his hand upon you. And the Lord will choose you to do something great, something marvelous, something transforming in the field that you choose, that you are good, the Lord will lay on your heart that this is the way, go in thereat, you will make a mark in this generation in Jesus' name. And actually, finally, number seven, it became a chief victor. A chief victor. It became victorious, and he was the chief among conquerors and among victorious people. And as you look at the journey, you find a time in his life when the Lord interrupted him. And that's what we're talking about tonight. I'm talking to you once again on interrupting the insignificant to become a man, to become a woman of incredible influence. Three things I'm looking at. Number one, there is this significant who became influential through conversion. Through conversion. If there is no conversion, there's no change. If there is no change, there is no turning around. If there's no turning around, you'll be going the way you have always gone, and then where do you land? But I pray that this day, will be the day when God will take you, an insignificant person, to become influential through conversion in your life. In Jesus' name, number two, is the interruption that brought incurables their kill. The interruption that brought somebody who had been incurable and sick and was just languishing in pain, and then all of a sudden, the Lord came and impacted his life and interrupted his life. Like tonight, if you're sick over there, interruption from heaven divine interruption that will clear all the sicknesses and diseases away from you. It will happen tonight in Jesus' name. The interruption that brought incurables their cure. And then, number three, the Lord will be inviting you tonight. The invitation to blot out your iniquity and crime completely so that you can start with a clean slate. You can start with a new life. You can start with a life that now will look up rather than looking back. I will look up. I will look forward. And I will go up in Jesus' name. I'm saying it for myself. You'll go up in Jesus' name. Look at number one here. 
the insignificant who became influential through conversion. It's still about uh, this man, Paul, and the reason we're bringing him as an example, as a model, because he himself said, the Father in heaven, God in heaven, chose him as a model, as a pattern, so that it will be a pattern for your life. And look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, it says, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me personal. He has enabled me. I think back, I look at the life I lived. I think back, I looked at the direction I was going. I look back, I look at the company I kept. I look back, I look at the visionless life that I had. But now I'm thanking Jesus Christ, my Lord, who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. He said, I never dreamt of this before. I never thought of this before. But now, what I have, what I'm doing, this ministry, this career, and this vision, and this project, it never entered my mind before what you never thought of. The great things you never thought you could achieve, your own time has now come. The new direction you never thought of, that new direction has now come. Whatever is the career, whatever is the ministry, and whatever is the achievement, you never thought of what heaven has thought of and what heaven is bringing your way. And then when the Lord counts you ready, that you say, yes, Lord, come, interrupt my life. Come, turn around my life. Come, change my life then the Lord will enable you. Everything he has created for you to do. It might look impossible now. It might, it might look as if, can I? Yes, I can. Can I? Yes, I can. Can I? Yes. Can I? Yes. Will I? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. will I? Yes, I will. Must I? Yes, I must. Yes, I must. I must, I will, I can. It will happen. Like it happened to him, he said, I'm thanking Christ Jesus. He didn't say, I'm thanking my stars. You know, some people think if they are stars, if they are zodiac, that you will bring them into, you know, something better in life. He didn't say, I thank my idol. Some people think it's an idol. Some people say, I thank my gang. Other people say, I thank my Lord. But he said, all those things will not work. All those things will not bring a change and a miracle in your life. But what will bring the miracle in your life? I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me. He will empower you. It will enable you. It will turn your life around. Look at verse 13. He remembered the past. He said, who was before a blasphemer? Was, was, was before a blasphemer. I pray that all the past life you have lived, you become past tense. Yeah. Every bad thing you ever did will become past tense. Every bad gag you ever followed will become past tense. And every regret you ever had, every tear you ever shed will become past tense. Yeah. Present tense is coming. Yeah. In my life, present tense is coming. Present joy, present happiness, present strength, present intelligence. Amen. Something good will replace all those bad things in Jesus' name. He said, who was before? Before. He said, my life I divide into three parts. Before, at present, and then future. He said, what I want the Lord to do, and what the Lord has done for me, is that he took everything before, he took everything of the past, everything that will have damaged my life, destroyed my life, everything that will have pinned me down, everything that when I remember, I'll say, what am I living for? The Lord said all that, he bundles together, and he put it in the past, and will never catch up with you anymore. 
And then the present, a bright present, a glorious present, a changed present. And then he said, I also have a future, and my future is better than my present. Good guys, good guys, good girls too. My future is higher than my present. And my future is bigger than my present. Be it so in your life, in Jesus' name. The past all gone. The past all forgiven. The past all forgotten. The past all wiped out. And now the present clean. The present good. The present glorious. The present challenging. This year will be the beginning of greater, higher, bigger things in your life in Jesus' name. He said, I was before a blasphemer, a persecutor. You know, he never thought of his own life. All he wanted to do is put good people down. Is put happy people down. All he wanted to do is put pressure on others who are aiming higher, who are going higher. He, did, he wasn't doing good in the past, but he wanted to destroy all the people that had made the right decisions in their life. And then he himself said, I was injurious. I injured people. I injured their feeling. I injured their lives. I injured their ladies. I injured their men. I injured all the people. I injured their office. I injured everyone, everywhere. But he thanked the Lord that all that injury in other people's life, uh, people say, what you sow, you will reap. But then God said, Paul, come on here. Everything you sowed, I will approach. You will not reap them anymore. And the Lord is telling you every bad thing you have sowed, every injury you have caused, every blaspheme, every uh, blasphemous thing you have said, and every persecution you have made to other people, all the sorrow you have made to other people, Tonight, the Lord interrupts your life and he takes them out of your life. You become a new person entirely. And then he said, I did it ignorantly in unbelief. That man, Saul of Tarsus, he thought he was intelligent. He said, I discovered everything I called intelligence. I was totally ignorant. He said, everything I called knowledge, he said, I know they are wrong. He didn't know he was wrong. He thought other people were wrong. And therefore, he was pursuing them and persecuting them. But he said, now the Lord gave me instruction. He gave me revelation. He gave me education. He said, as the Lord interrupted my life, he gave me a new education. The Lord will educate you. The Lord will instruct you. You will know that all those things of the past, you did them ignorantly in unbelief. Unbelief, unbelief. You see, Paul, uh, who was Saul at that time, he was a highly religious man. Highly religious man. He was a Pharisee. And he said, if anybody was religious, I was religious. You see, there are people, maybe you are there and... I, you know, appreciate your life and I give glory to God for you. But you know, sometimes we can be sincere. I, I learned of a particular person on the football field. He was uh, very sincere and he was uh, driving the ball in the wrong direction and actually scored a goal uh, for the other team. Instead of scoring a goal for himself, there are people who think they are sincere and they are trying uh, to score a goal for themselves, but they are scoring a goal for the devil. They are scoring a goal for the enemy. They are scoring a goal for the opponent same team. But now, as the Lord interrupted his life, now he knew that I was in unbelief, I was ignorant, and then I did everything injurious to other people. But a time came in his life, as he was going on the road to destruction, the Lord stopped him. The Lord, when he comes to you and he stops you, is for a good reason. It's to say, 
you can do better than this. You can climb higher than this. You can be a better person than you have been. And the Lord will do that in your life tonight. Better, higher, greater that will make you. Look at verse 14 there. In verse 14, it says, But the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant. The grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant. What does that mean? Now, there are two words. One is grace. The other is justice. Justice is giving you what you merit. You've stolen, and then there's punishment. Justice. You've, uh, you are lazy, and therefore there is no progress. There is justice. You planted something evil, and in a, deep, a, a terrible crop is coming. That is justice. You have uh, done injurious things. You have injured your life, and then God said, that's it, final. That is justice. But the man said, if I had had justice, if the Lord had paid me the coin that I was uh, going to spend, I wouldn't be alive today. But he said, the grace, the grace of God, uh, justice is giving you what you merit, and then grace is giving you unmerited favor. Favor. On your life, favor. In your mind, favor. Your destiny, favor. And it is unmerited favor. He said, and the grace of our Lord and the unmerited favor of our Lord was exceeding abundant. Abundant, that means the forgiveness of God will be greater than your sin. The freedom of God will be greater than your bondage. And all the good things the Lord will do in your life. You are young, you are a teenager, grace. You have gone out, you have come out of school, grace. You are a young adult, there is grace. Grace, you need that grace so that you can go beyond yourself. You can do beyond what you thought you could do by yourself. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. And then in verse 15, it tells us, it says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ came into this world to save sinners of whom I have chief. He said, I never thought I could be saved of whom I am chief. He said, gather all the sinners together and look at them one by one. Look at all the sins they have committed. When he came on, his sins were greater than them all. And whatever you are, whoever you are, wherever you are coming from, whatever you have done, as you look at yesterday and last week and last year, and then all the years of your past life, you say, I'm so bad if I were God, I won't even save a person like this. But the Lord said, you are not God. God's grace is coming unto you. And the people that think they cannot be saved, tonight he has come to save you. He has come to interrupt you with grace. Interrupt your life with mercy. Interrupt your life with the goodness of heaven coming upon your life in Jesus' name. That's why he says this is a faithful sin and worthy of all acceptation. He said, this is worthy of your acceptation, of your accepting it, that grace was for him, and grace is for me, and grace is for you. And the same grace the Lord gave Paul the apostle, he'll give you tonight. The same grace he has given me, he'll give you tonight, because it is all of grace. And what if the, if the Lord will take your life? Well, you don't know Paul, but you know me. Do you know Paul? Have you met Paul before? Do you know me? Aha, uh -huh. he will do for you greater than what he has done for me. The Lord interrupted my life at on a particular day. And when he interrupted my life, I didn't understand what will happen. It is that interruption of my life that has brought me to where I am now. And I see you climbing higher than I have climbed. 
I see you going higher than I've gone, and I see you achieving more than I can ever achieve, and it will be upon you in Jesus' name. Grace. Paul, by grace, me by grace, and you now, it is your turn. By what? By grace. And then look at verse 16. It says in verse 16, How be it for this cause I obtained mercy. For this reason I obtained mercy. For this purpose I obtained mercy that in me force Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them, for a pattern to you, for a pattern to others, which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. What the, what the apostle is saying is, as the Lord had mercy on me, he took me as a pattern, and he's going to have the same mercy upon you. As the Lord brought salvation to me, he took me as a pattern, he's going to have salvation in your life. As the Lord turned me around and then he made me to climb up to higher heights only by grace, not by marriage, he will do the same thing for you. Tonight is your night. He will take that insignificant person will become an influential person by conversion as we turn to him in Jesus' name. Let's look at number two there. Number two there is the interruption that brought incurables their kill. The interruption that brought incurables their kill. There are people who are, you know, just lying down there. They're sick. They're infirm. They're incurable. They've done everything they could do. And their parents or their helpers have not left them alone just to rot there and to die there. We we'll read a story like that of a man that had been sick all this long. And then Christ came and interrupted him with a miracle. Anybody there? The Lord comes tonight, he interrupts your life with a miracle. Look at this. The story is in John chapter 5. In John chapter 5, verse 5, and a certain man was there, which had an infirmity, 38 years. And you think about that. If you are not 38 years old, think about somebody who had been sick, infirm, and invalid, and incurable, from the time before you were born, just lying there, lying down there, expecting a cure, and yet it never came. He had, he had given up. He said a certain man was there. He had an infirmity. He had a disease. He had a sickness. He had an incurable sin, 30 and 8 years. And then in verse 6, we're told in verse 6, when Jesus saw him lie down there, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, a long time in that sickness, a long time in that disease, a long time in that uh, impotence. He said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The Lord interrupted his life. The Lord interrupted, is just staying there with nothing that he thought he could do. And then in verse 6, the man said, the impotent man said, uh, in verse 7, the impotent man said, uh, answered him, sir, I have no man. The Lord interrupted him. Can I assure you tonight, the Lord will interrupt you with a miracle. You know, what you've been asking for, Lord, even though I'm young, look at this condition, look at that condition, and it appears there is no answer. Answer has come. Amen. Healing has come. Amen. Your cure has come. Amen. You know, it may not be physical healing. It may be that the brain is not functioning the way it ought to function. Sir, I don't remember anything, but now... Tonight, you remember everything. 
other people say, you know, since I came out of school, I just don't know what to do to move forward. It's like everything within is dead. The Lord will interrupt your life. Because new life and new energy and new strength will come for you today in Jesus' name. The man said, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, Jesus said unto him, he never expected this. He had never seen Jesus in his life. He had never encountered Jesus, the healer, the savior, redeemer in his life. It was an interruption. He was looking at the, at the sea, at the pool. He was waiting for an angel to come. His eyes were glued at that pool until Christ came and jolted him up and interrupted his life. Interruption that brings miracle will come to you. Interruption that brings divine provision will come to you. Interruption that brings joy in your life will come to you in Jesus' name. You know, my friends, brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, many people, in fact, almost all people in life, many people do not like interruption. If they are playing uh, their football, they don't like interruption. If they are watching the TV, they don't like interruption. If they are even gambling, gambling away their lives, they don't like interruption. If they are doing the thing they have always done, we did not yield any good result, they don't like interruption. If they are lying down and they are looking at the pool where they think they will get their healing, they don't like interruption. But you know, God is so kind and God is so good. Even though you don't like interruption, it will interrupt your life. Because he knows if he does not interrupt your life, nothing better will come. If you keep on going and going and going the way you've always gone, he knew that nothing better will come. Therefore, he comes to interrupt your life. And this impact, this convocation is for an, if, is for an interruption that in your life, all the things that happened in the past, everything will be interrupted. And then this new year will be a new life. And then you look back, all the things of the past and the weakness of the past and the regrets of the past, everything has now gone. Interruption. Somebody shout interruption. And so Jesus said unto him, Rise, he had never heard that before in his life. Take up thy bed. He never heard anything like that in his life. And walk. You mean I should rise up, take up my bed, carry my bed, and walk? I've never done that for 38 years. What you have not done for 38 years, 28 years, 18 years, 8 years, what you have not done all these many years, today is the beginning. Yeah. You'll arise. Yeah. You'll take up that challenge. Yeah. You will walk. Yeah. I said, you will walk. Yeah. Lo and behold, look at verse 9. In verse 9, and immediately... The man was made whole immediately. That interruption stopped the 38 years of problem. He was made whole. He took up his bed and walked. Hold on. You see what Jesus said? It would have looked impossible. We can't do that. Arise. No, I cannot. Take up your bed. No, I cannot. Walk. No, I cannot. Don't say you cannot because a new day has dawned. Whatever you could not do before, when you hear that Jesus says, arise now, you don't look at yourself, look at your past, look at the 38 years, look at the fact you don't have any man, and look at the fact that you're weak inside. When Jesus speaks, power comes with that word. 
When you say change, don't say, I cannot change. Hold on. When Jesus speaks, power comes with his word. When it says, see, don't say, I cannot see. When Jesus speaks, power comes with his word. He said, arise. He didn't hold him. I'll not come and hold you there. He didn't jerk him off. I'll not come over there to jerk you. The word is coming to you from heaven. And as the word gets to you, power will come with that word. Then he said, take up thy bed. Uh -uh. Are you kidding me? Are you joking? People take me up and take up my bed for me. I cannot take up my bed. He didn't say that when he speaks to your life. The power to do what he has said, it will come. When he says, go and succeed. I never passed any exam in my life. Forget about that. Go and succeed. Yeah. Go and be an achiever. Uh, Lord, me, it's never happened. I try, I try my best. It never happens. Don't talk like that. When he says, go and be an achiever, then you go from this impact to say, thank you, Lord. And the very first thing you lay your hand upon to do, you will achieve. Yeah. So he said, take up your bed. And then he took up his bed and he walked. Now, when you start doing what you've not done for 38 years, it will appear strange to yourself. It will look like, is it for real? Am I right? Can I maintain this? Can I sustain this? The Lord is talking to you tonight, and he says a conversion and a change and a transformation is coming in your life. When you start doing what you have not done for 10 years, for 20 years, for 38 years, you'll be strange to yourself. But there's nothing strange. Jesus will back you up. You know, when a child tries to walk for the first time, that child stands up and that child begins to walk and then he falls and then he falls because he's doing it all by himself with natural, well, natural strength and natural force. But when Jesus told this man who had not walked for 38 years and interrupted his life with a miracle, he stood up and started walking without falling. You will walk, you will not fall. You will move up and you will not fail. And the things that appear impossible, suddenly they will become possible in your life. It will happen. He was interrupted by a miracle. There's another story in Luke chapter 7. Let me just tell you because of our time. The only son of a widow woman had died. And they were carrying the procession, going to bury that son. The widow was there, and all the people were there. And then Jesus came. Tonight, Jesus has come to you. He did not join the profession to keep on marching with them to go and bury the dead son. He interrupted that procession and said, woman, Weep not. The Lord is interrupting the past in your life. And the Lord is saying, Weep not, cry not, a new day has now come. With the beginning of impact in your life, there is an interruption. And it touched the coffin, and that interruption brought new life into that young man. It will touch you tonight. Interrupt that procession. And the people who are crying for you, it will wipe out their tears. And you yourself crying for yourself, it will wipe out the tears in your life. In Jesus' name. Another woman, another woman, he was 18 years bound together by the devil. And then the woman was not even expecting anything or praying for anything. She's been like that. And habitually, she was used to that for those 18 years. And then Jesus interrupted her. I like the interruption of Jesus. It brings something good in your life. It brings healing in your life. It brings deliverance in your life. It brings power in your life. He laid hands on her unexpectedly. And the woman straightened up. I'm looking at you. You're straightening up. 
everything that is bent in your life, everything that is crooked in your life, everything that is upside down in your life, you're straightening up tonight in Jesus' name. They all had their cures because Christ, the healer, interrupted them with a miracle. I'm looking for someone there that the Lord will single you out. And as you are going on, as you are joining on in life, sickness, sin, satanic affliction, poverty, regrets, DNA that I don't know what that DNA looks like, interruption comes tonight and you are made whole in Jesus' name. Look at number three now. Number three, we're talking about invitation to blot out all your iniquity and crime completely. The Lord invites you. You know, the Lord never accused anyone of anything. He said, I came not into the world to condemn, but the Lord, the Father, sent me to save. The Lord is not your accuser. Satan is your accuser. Yes, your conscience will remind you and drive you to Christ who alone can cleanse you and convert you and cure you and turn your life around. And tonight, an invitation is coming to you. The King of Kings the Lord of Lords, the great healer, the great physician, the great savior, the great redeemer is inviting you tonight. And he says, come, you are come. He says, I want to beautify your life. He says, I want to make you a trophy of my supernatural power tonight. He will do it. And don't say, don't say, I am not a Christian. We're not talking about that. Don't say, I'm not religious. We're not talking about that. I'm talking about our creator. Look at that watch in your hand. Somebody made that watch. And just, <clears throat> God has blessed you already. Just like somebody made that watch, someone high up there made you. And he's looking at that watch, at that creation. He's saying, I want that watch to be perfect. I want that creature to be what it ought to be. It's your creator talking to you. It's the power of God from heaven talking to you. So there's not religion, religion, religion. There's the almighty God saying, I want to take your life and turn your life around and change your life. And I want to make you a conqueror. Let me use the language you understand. I want to make you a hero. A hero in this life. We will look at your life and we'll say, are you not so-and-so? we say, no. Uh -uh. Are you not Mr. So-and-so? Are you not Miss So-and-so? Are you not Mrs. So-and-so? you say, no. What do you mean? Oh, that one you knew, that one is gone. This one is a new creature. This one is a new boy. This one is a new girl. Now, all the things I couldn't do before, now I can. Where are you? Now you can. How will that happen when you honor the invitation that the Lord himself is giving you? And then in that invitation, the way you respond is in Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore. He wants to interrupt your life. Repent ye therefore. He wants to change you. He wants to remodel you. He wants to mend your life. Repent ye therefore. What does repent mean? Does that mean cry? Not really. Does that mean get on the ground and roll? Not really. Repent. What does that mean? Does that mean to slap yourself? Not really. What it means is change your mind. Change your direction. Your thought, evil was good. Change your mind. Evil is evil. Good is good. Your thought by yourself, you could make it. You are tried 
for all these many years, and by yourself, you couldn't make it. Change your mind. Your thought, new year, new resolution. I will turn over a new leaf. You cannot. You have tried it before. It didn't work. Change your mind. Your thought, sin was sweet. But now you know that sin is bitter. Change your mind. Repent means change your mind. Change your attitude. Change your direction. Change your practice. Change the way you are going. Repent ye therefore. You are walking this way. Change your mind. Repent. You turn around 180 degrees. You know, some people, they say you turn 360 degrees. No. If you turn 360 degrees, you'll be facing the same place you were facing before. But when you are facing this way and you turn 180 degrees, then you go the direction, opposite direction, new life will come to you. I said new life will come to you. Repent ye therefore and be converted. I don't understand. Be converted. When you take scraps of paper from the printing shops and then you collect them together, you couldn't do anything with them. They are not sellable. And then eventually you take them to the converters and they convert those papers. They can become currency. They can become some useful exercise books. They can become some good, good biographies. Conversion is to take what is useless and then make Make it useful, the Lord will take your life tonight. That useless life will become useful life. That life that is going down will come up in Jesus' name. And that thing that cannot see beyond your nose, you cannot see tomorrow, you cannot see the future, and there is no future, and you're just going like a blind man, conversion will come tonight, and the Lord will make you see far. You will see far, and you will see a great destiny before you in Jesus' name. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Sins blotted out. Have you written anything before, and you try to blot it out, you try to erase it, you use an eraser, but there's still something there that shows that something was there before. And if somebody wants to read it very well, he can carefully read what what you thought you had erased, and then there's another kind of eraser. It may be you blot it out with uh, that whitish thing, uh, and then people can still see that something has been covered there. Then you put a uh, milk in, people can still see because that part of the paper is different from the other parts. But you know what? The Lord has an eraser in heaven. And then he will come, he will erase that thing out of your mind, out of your memory, out of your personality. You will become so new. New life. New personality. New intention. A new goal. A new life entirely. That the Lord may blot out your sins when the times of refreshing, he will refresh your life. Times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. That's your invitation. The Lord said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you restoration. I will give you redemption. I will give you forgiveness. I'll give you salvation. I will give you every blessed thing connected with salvation. I rejoice with you. That invitation is coming to you. And as it comes to you tonight, I pray you'll accept, you'll not reject in Jesus' name. And the Lord does not discriminate. He calls everyone. And he calls everyone to turn around. He calls everyone to change. He calls, he calls everyone to uh, change the direction of your life and change your mind and say, Lord, here, here I come. Make me the best you can make a human being. That's a great challenge for the Lord. You come to the Lord and say, Lord, I change. Lord, I turn around. Lord, I change all the paths. And I come to you, not by merit. I want your grace. I don't deserve anything. If it's to deserve, that's justice. But it is the grace of God. or merited favor. I come for today. And then you put yourself completely in the hands of the Lord. 
and see what the Lord will make of your life. And when people see you a week from now, a month from now, when they see you as we go into the new year, they'll barely recognize you. Everything would have changed. Your personality would have changed. Your character would have changed. Your language would have changed. Your outlook would have changed. And then your vibrance in life, vitality, the vigor in life, everything would have changed. And when you, you're not the sloppy one anymore, you're the one that stands right and you have a way, a place you are going and you are getting there and they will want you to be the model for their lives. Model. Hero, champion, achiever, a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I there? Where am I? The Lord bless you. The Lord interrupt your life tonight. With power from heaven, with miracle from heaven, with salvation from heaven, the Lord interrupt your life tonight in Jesus' name. It's bowed and eyes closed. The Lord wants to begin the work now. He cannot begin until you give yourself to him. Until you say, yes, Lord, here am I. I come, I come, I come. The invitation that will blot out all your iniquity and all your crimes completely. Heads bowed and eyes closed. He's interrupting your life now. And you are cooperating with that interruption. And you're saying, Lord, here am I, I come. Lord, here am I, I come. Wherever you are, you raise up your hand. You raise up your hand. You look at your life. I don't like this past life. I don't like what I've been. I don't like the direction I've been going. This is not good. If I continue going that way, I will just be washed off with the, with the, with the water in the gutter. But Lord, I want to change. I want a definite turnaround in my life. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. God bless you there. God bless you. That's wonderful. God bless you there. A change is coming right now. If you are raising up your hand, please, please stand up and say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All over the field, everywhere today, just stand up, just stand up. Where are you? Where are you? Are you thinking of it? Well, think of it quick and then respond because this is a great moment in your life. I'm still waiting for you. Are you there? Are you there? On the right hand side, on the left hand side, are you there at the back? What you could not change for yourself, Christ will change change it for you. What you couldn't bring better and make better in your life, the Lord will do it, yes, for you. And the Lord will do that great thing in your life and turn you around a better life, a brighter life, a higher life. Where are you? Far to the back. You are hearing the voice of the Lord saying, why don't you respond now? I invite you. The Lord invites you. Jesus invites you. The Savior invites you. And the one who is going to forgive all your sins, he invites you tonight. Just stand up there and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. God bless you. God bless you. As you're standing up, just tell the Lord. In, in, in any way you can tell the Lord, Lord, make a new person out of me. Lord, change my life. Lord, I need your conversion. Lord, I need your favor. Lord, I need your merited favor. Lord, I come. I need your forgiveness. Lord, I come. I need your freedom. That, that's it. That's it. And the moment you tell him, he'll do it. He's been expecting you before you came. And now that you have come, he's going to do it in your life. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Make that change in my life. I give you permission, my Lord, interrupt my life, interrupt the evil in my life, and that interruption will make you an incredible influence in this life. It starts today. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everyone, man, woman, boy, girl, young, old. I thank you for everyone. I pray, Lord, you interrupt their lives with your grace, even this time in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, your unmerited favor will come to everyone.
I pray your forgiveness will come to everyone. Your promise, your blot out all their sins. And I pray right now from their life, from their memory, from their mind, blot out all their transgressions in Jesus' name. And I pray that your goodness will come to every life. Let them know that you've touched them, you've transformed them, you've converted them. And from this moment, things will never remain the same anymore in their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. A good amen. A resounding amen. The Lord has done it. Keep on standing, keep on standing. Don't sit down. Uh, you're happy that you are now a changed person, a transformed person. You're happy that that invitation has brought you into an incredible influence is starting tonight. So our counselors will come. We'll call our minister to come and take care of this period. And then after that, healing for the incurable. What a wonderful interruption. Beginning a new year with a glorious interruption. Our wonderful friends here, something has happened to you today. A glorious interruption that will start something new for you. All our online friends, an interruption has taken place already. I welcome you into they are like your people as the GS is coming. Praise the Lord. I rejoice with you. Interruption of healing. Interruption with miracle. Whatever your need is, the Lord is going to stop that sickness now. You are blind or near blind. The Lord will clear your eyesight. Paralyzed, broken bones, the Lord will touch you right now. You're weak in your body, the Lord will give you strength. Healing. Where are you? You raise up that hand, you lay the other hand where you have the sickness. Just understand. Look at all those people I read about. The Lord interrupted them with miracle. They were not even expecting that 38 year uh, old sick uh, man, sick for 38 years, just lying there. The Lord interrupted him. He wasn't the one crying out and crying and shaking and moving. The Lord will do the same for you. Not by marriage, by grace. Undeserved favor of healing of deliverance, of miracle, your life tonight in Jesus' name. And after the final amen checkup, that thing will not be there anymore. God will put testimony in your mouth. It's of that hand. Father, we come to you. You are God of love, a God of mercy, a God of power, the God that cannot fail. And the God that loves all your children, all your people, everyone that you have created. I'm asking, Lord, that tonight you touch everyone without exception in Jesus' name. I pray whether the sickness is small or whether it's big, whether it's incurable or whether it is something treatable, I pray, Lord, tonight in your presence there must be power. Power manifestation, manifestation of healing, manifestation of deliverance. Do it in every life tonight in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, there will be the joy of healing, the joy of miracle, the joy of deliverance for every particular person in Jesus' name. Anything that needs repair, repair. 
Anything that needs recovery, touch them. Anything that causes pain, remove everything. Whether the sickness has this name or that name, uh, long-standing or just, uh, uh, just recently, I pray that right now you touch and heal every one of them uh, in Jesus' name. For everyone. For everyone. Confirm that miracle. Confirm that healing now. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It is done. Amen. You've got the miracle. Amen. Things are not the same anymore. Check up yourself. You'll find your miracle is there. It has happened. Don't just clap. Check your body. What you were not able to do before, an interruption has happened. A miracle has happened. A deliverance has happened. God has done something in your life. The man of God has prayed. And there will be a manifestation. There is one manifestation in your life already. Check yourself very well. What you couldn't do before, you couldn't hear very well before, you couldn't see very well before, you couldn't move any of your own limb, your hand, your leg, or whatever part of your body. The man of God has prayed, and you heard it, 38 years infirmity, taken away. And tonight, it doesn't matter how long or how short. It doesn't matter how the history, whether recent or long-standing problem, a miracle has happened. A miracle has happened. Check, check it now. As you...